you are a beginner goalie trying to figure out this whole butterfly thing, this video is for you. I talk to a lot of beginner goalies and even adult goalies who have been maybe been out of the game the last 20 years who are coming back to it and they're trying to pick up the butterfly and they're having real trouble with it because it's tricky. So today I'm going to share a few tips and tricks that have helped me as a fellow beginner intermediate goalie. Now I am definitely not a goalie coach. I'm definitely not trying to play one on YouTube, but I, you know, it wasn't so long ago that the butterfly was entirely new to me as well. I, don't, I remember what it felt like and these are some of the things that I worked on that actually got me feeling like a real goalie out on the ice sometimes sometimes I still feel like like a baby fish just out there swimming with the sharks and if you're a new goalie you might be new to this channel so I will tell you what we do around here what we do is we hit subscribe and then when we subscribe we like hit the bell so we know all about the new videos as they come out sound cool Okay, let's do that right now. One of the biggest questions I get is, how do I drop into the butterfly evenly? So goalies find that maybe you find that one pad comes down and then the other, and we want to really just get that nice boom, drop right into the butterfly. So how do we do that? I think the first thing is um, have the right equipment. So I wear a knee sleeve and a knee pad. And if you want to see exactly the equipment, you can look. Here, I just did a video going over everything I have, showing you exactly what, what it is and how I put it on and all that jazz. But having that gear, it's, it's doesn't, the, going into the butterfly isn't uncomfortable. It doesn't hurt. It doesn't, you know, it, it's not, I'm not in my brain a little apprehensive, like, ooh, this, this doesn't feel right. It just feels totally fine. My second piece of advice for getting your butterfly to land evenly is kind of don't think about it too much. To coin a phrase, just do it. Um, I think if you think about driving your knees down rather than kind of trying to push your feet out until they release and you kind of fall into it, I think it's better to really think of driving those knees down and trying to get them to come down together. Also, if we have a little bit of a wider stance, it's definitely easier to get into the butterfly. So sometimes if we're new to skating, when I was new to skating, I would stand up a lot. And then to go from here into the butterfly, well, that that's, that's a lot harder. There's a lot more distance to cover. But if I'm a little bit wider in my stance, I'm flexed at my hips. So I'm not, you know, leaning forward with my torso. I'm just kind of here. I'm over my shoulders or over my skates. So if I'm here in my ready stance, and then I drive those knees down that, you know, that gets me into it. Think of your skates kind of releasing outward rather than rolling forward. And there's probably a time, a real goalie coach can tell you, there might be a time when you want to release off your toes versus release to the side. But I think if you're just learning how to butterfly, that will keep you kind of stationary. One thing I think about is I try to imagine like, like my upper body doesn't move. My upper body's gonna stay nice and tall and my hands are gonna stay basically where they are. So almost like if I had a snapshot from my head up, there isn't really gonna be that much change. Obviously I'm gonna drop a little bit, but there isn't gonna be that much change in displacement or posture or position. Now, if you're wearing knee pads, you got the knee sleeves, it still feels uncomfortable. It still feels really uncomfortable in your hips. I did a video on this little pad hack. You can find it here, uh, where we give, add a little height to your knee stack. So you're not going, technically you're not going down as far. And there's actually, um, biomechanically, there is less torque on your knees and hips. So if it's just like, man, it just never feels good. Watch that video and try that little pad hack. Final point about going down evenly, because I know sometimes when you see those top level goalies and they smash their pads down. So that, you know, well, I can't even do it. They make like wham, wham, big noise. You don't save more pucks by making more noise. You're not gonna scare the puck out of the net. So really you just need to use as much force as you need to get there. Making more noise, noise is energy. So really all you're doing is you're taking potential energy, uh, transferring it into kinetic energy to make noise. And we don't need to make noise. We make noise by stopping pucks. 
So for some of us, getting into the butterfly isn't too bad. We just kind of let gravity do its thing, and it's like, poof, I'm in the butterfly. Now that we're in the butterfly, it's like, okay, now what, now what do I do? One of the things I was really confused about when I first started trying to move or, or butterfly slide was, did I have to try and lift up this, le this sliding pad? So if I was pushing, did I have to lift that up to kind of decrease the friction there to get more slide? And... Again, I'm not a goalie coach, so do what your goalie coach tells you to do. But to me, I don't have to do that. If you feel like your pads aren't sliding enough, and that was that was the case for mine. Like I started with all used gear and it was old gear and it really just didn't slide very well. So I uh, started by using some ski wax. So I got some glide wax. I was a varsity uh, cross country ski racer in university. So I went to my wax box, got out a little glide wax, just crayoned it on the sliding surfaces of my pads. And it really made a difference. And, it, and I actually shot a video about it. So you can check it out here. But it and the durability would last, you know, easily three or four skates. It took like a minute to put on. There's also some um, like actual goalie pad sliding polish stuff. Um, I know ice cream is one um, that you can get from goalie parts. I think Paso makes some. So, um, you know, those might work as well. I know other people have used different products. Now that I have the Warrior pads, these slide really nice. I've got the weave on the inside. I've never had to put anything on them. They slide really nice. The reason you don't want to lift up that lead pad is because number one, it's way harder, <laughs> but also number two, then, you know, then you're, you're opening up a gap where, you know, if you're playing with some better players, they're going to put the puck there every single time. For me, in in order to slide effectively, I had to be really strong in this hip. So I worked a lot off the ice, you know, on building some strength and stability in that hip in a single kneeling position. Um, and then you have to be strong in your torso as well, so that as you push, everything goes together. If I have an energy leak and, you know, my hip moves and I'm going to lose my balance. So I want to be nice and strong so that everything goes together. And then it is a little bit of a balancing thing. If you're getting off balance, you're going to have trouble or you're going to push and you're going to spin. Probably a lot of you have that problem. I certainly did when I started out. So what I did was I slowed things down and it's like, okay, where, where do I feel like I can get, you know, a good push off my skate? Where does my skate feel like I'm getting good bite, if you know what I mean? You know, because sometimes if I have to push right off my tip of my toe, well, then I'm going to spin. But if I get a good drive, you know, it's, it's no problem at all. I can push in a nice straight line or push where I want to get to. So practice and start adding in the elements of like, okay, if I'm recovering this leg, it means I want to go that way. So one of the things that helps get my momentum going that way, get me in a position to push, is if I turn my head and hands. See, when I turn my head and hands, how already my hips have come around a little bit where I want to be. So just go slow, practice getting just that foot up, Boom, strong in the torso, strong in the hips. And then just add in a big push. So I'm gonna say, okay, let's say the, there's a pass over here, boom, and a push. And I'm not trying to go super fast. I'm just trying to feel what's going on. Sometimes I think going slow exposes your inefficiencies more than going fast. So sometimes goalies go fast and it kind of like, well, oh, that looks kind of good but there's a lot of inefficiencies. If I'm going slow and I'm off balance, you know, I'm probably going to tip over or not go very far or slide in the wrong direction. So head and hands, and then just a big push. And notice I'm just worrying about the push. The next element of that would be, okay, let's, as soon as we finish that push, let's close that five hole because we've all done it where we've got a big slide across. We've got to where we need to be, but we kind of forget like, oh yeah, there's the big hole here and the puck's been buried in the net. So the next thing will be still not, not racing, but we're going to come around, push, and then close 
that five hole down. And I know a lot of you watching this video are actually really good goalies, so I'd love it if you would sort of share with the community, what are your number one tips for getting a better butterfly slide or a better butterfly in general? Let's use the wealth of knowledge in the community. If you could drop a comment below, I'd super appreciate it. And so, so would all us other sort of relative newbies. So now you can push somewhat, you know, to push, you're gonna close your five hole. What happens though, if you need to move somewhere beyond just one push? <laughs> so you need to be able to stop. So let's do a little stop, push, stop. I guess we have to do a push, stop, push. So we're gonna go, we're gonna push, boom, we're gonna stop, then we're gonna push, and stop. And each time we stop, we're gonna make sure we're closing our five hole and we're gonna try to stay square. So notice how I kind of spun around a little bit on that last stop. That's less than ideal. So push, stop, push, stop. Again, don't race, just work on the technique. We're gonna get a good square push. We're gonna close our five hole. Like as soon as we stop, we're gonna close our five hole. Get a nice push. As soon as we stop, we're gonna close our five hole. Head in hands, boom, stop, five holes closed. Boom, stop, five holes closed. So not bad. This arm got a little bit wild, but those are the things. When I go slow, I can kind of notice that. Or take out your mobile phone, take a GoPro, video yourself, watch it back, because for sure you'll be like, Ugh. That's, that's what I look like. <laughs> that's not what it feel like. And you'll do like maybe three reps each way of these and then take a rest. When we're learning a new skill, fatigue is gonna hamper us. So we don't wanna go to the point where our legs are exhausted and we're crushed. It's not a conditioning workout, it's a technique workout. And this is how we learn by really deliberately practicing. The next one we're gonna do is adding a couple pushes in together. So it's gonna be push, push, stop. So head in hands, push, push, stop. Push, push, stop. It was a little too fast, right? It was a little bit sloppy. So let's slow it down a bit. Push, push, stop. Push, push, stop. Again, just kind of three each way. And, and again, you can see as you add a little neural complexity, it's like, ooh, now things fall apart, right? When I just pushed, didn't look too bad. When I add that second push, okay, now things fall apart, but sometimes I need to add that second push because I don't have the strength and the efficiency sometimes to push from where I am to where I need to be. And I have to take those couple quick pushes. And the last one is just gonna be a big push and a glide. So getting the feeling of getting good bite, putting all your oomph into it, and then being able to hold that stable glide position. So big push, glide. Big push, glide. Closing up that five hole. Trying to keep that flare, so trying not to let your pads, you know, fold behind you and open up with a nice strong torso. So we've covered getting into the butterfly, a couple drills to help you move from your butterfly. Again, not from a goalie coach's perspective, but just from a fellow beginner's perspective. I think the last thing and probably the hardest thing for me, I don't know about you, tell me in the comments below, is getting out of my butterfly efficiently. And a part of that I feel like is trusting my edges. I feel like I wanna get my feet way so much under me before I come out of my butterfly when really, you know, I, I don't need to get my feet underneath me that much to get my blades to bite. So part of this is learning to trust your edges, I think is what they say. So again, I wanna maintain a good body position. Ideally, I don't wanna use my hands, although sometimes I still do, you might see that. But I'm just gonna do what I call an alternate knee recovery, and we work on this off ice as well. But it's just boom, boom, getting back up nice and quick. Boom, boom, and practicing both legs. I'm not, you don't need to smash back down in your butterfly. We really just wanna work on the getting up. You can see I, I cheat with this arm. I use it to sort of help give me some balance sometimes. So over time, I need to work on improving that. On top of that, I'll give you a big time cheater move. When I got my blades profiled for the first time, it was pretty much a game changer. I did a video about it here. I'll, it tells you exactly what I got, how I got them done. But it just felt like I could get a bite from any position 
that I was in. And when I recover like that, I could recover with my feet a little bit wider, which meant I could recover a little bit quicker. So check that out if you just want like a little turbo boost <laughs> to your butterfly skating. It really, really helped. So there are some beginner drills to get you started from beginner to beginner. Uh, if you want me to do more beginner drills like this, then make sure you like this video, drop a comment below, tell me what you need help with. Again, I'm not a goalie coach, not trying to be a goalie coach, not gonna become a goalie coach, but just wanna get more people playing goal. And it, it, you know, cause like, I know there's a lot of people out there and some of you are watching who are like, I just always wanted to be a goalie, but like, I don't even know where I'd start. Like I never played hockey growing up. Like I'm, like I'm crazy. Like something's wrong with me that I wanna be a goalie. Ain't nothing wrong with you. Something wrong with all the other people. I'll tell you that. <laughs> so that's what I'm trying to do with these tips. Just make it easy. I know what it's like. I know what it's like to learn. I didn't start playing uh, on ice hockey. I played road hockey goalie when I was a kid all the time. I was very good, very talented. Uh, but I didn't play, start playing ice hockey goalie until I was 47 years old. So, uh, and I did it so I could learn more of what it feels like and design better off ice training for you guys. But again, just like you, I'm a goalie on the inside and I love it and I wanna play better. It hurts my feelings when the puck goes in the net and I know I should have had it. I feel like I let my whole team down and I don't want to, I don't like that feeling. It ruins my day, to be honest with you. So I want to help you not ruin your day. If getting into that butterfly position just doesn't feel natural, like it feels like, you know, you just, you can't flare your pads at all, then do the butterfly challenge. It's a free program I put together. It's 14 days long. I'll put a link in the description for you, but it gives you a, like a two to four inch wider butterfly flare in, in two weeks or less. And even a two inch, you know, that's enough to keep a puck out of the net if someone's trying to stuff it in at the post. So that's a freebie. That's an easy one that you can do to get a better butterfly and even just get it feeling more comfortable for you. So don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to drop your helpful tips in the comments below to share with the whole community. You are the best. I will see you next time.